So in this video, we'll check out another related rates example. And the situation that's described here is that two roads are meeting at an angle of 60 degrees. One guy is going to walk along one of the roads beginning at 1 p.m. And they're going to be walking at a speed of 3 miles per hour. And then at 2 p.m., another person starts along the other road, and they're walking a little bit faster. They're walking at 4 miles per hour. We want to know how quickly the two people are separating at 4 p.m. So we have a road going this way. We have another road coming this way. So this right here would be our 60-degree angle. I'm going to convert that to radians. Uh, so in radians, that would be pi by 3. And I'm only going to do that because radians are considered dimensionless. We might get into some trouble. We might not have our units work out the way that we need them to uh, if we proceeded with degrees there. So that's the reason why I'm going to switch that. Now, this distance right here along the, we'll say that the first person is walking along the horizontal road here. Uh, this distance is changing. So I'm going to have to label that with a variable. And as the other person walks along this road, that distance is also changing so we're gonna have to label that with a variable and then the distance between the two people is changing too so we're gonna label that with a Z now this triangle is somewhat difficult to handle because it's not a right triangle if this were a right triangle we could use sine cosine tangent to relate our variables we're not gonna have that luxury here so we're gonna have to recall something that's a little bit trickier than just regular old sine cosine and tangent uh, before we get to that point though let's go ahead and define our rates so at 1 p.m. the person is walking along this road they, they leave at 1 p.m. they're walking along this road at a rate of 3 miles per hour so the rate of change of X with respect to time is going to be 3 miles per hour and that's a positive 3 since X is getting larger as the person walks and similarly dy dt is going to be equal to 4 miles per hour and that's positive as well since y is increasing as the person walks away from that intersection uh, we want to know dz dt evaluated at 4 p.m. so this is what we want to know dz dt evaluated at 4 p.m. now what we're gonna have to do here is we're gonna have to find a way to relate these sides with that angle we can't use regular old sine, cosine, and tangent because it's not a right triangle. But what we can use is something that you probably remember discussing a little bit in trig. And you don't need it a, a ton in math, only because uh, a, a lot of math problems, unfortunately, are, are best case scenarios and they deal with right triangles. But in the real world, obviously not everything is going to be a right triangle, and this is a situation where we don't have a right triangle. The law of cosines is something that can relate sides and angles of all triangles, not necessarily just right triangles. So here's what the law of cosines says, just to kind of refresh this a little bit. If we have a triangle that doesn't have to be a right triangle, and this is side A, side B, and side C, we define these angles or we label these angles on this triangle as the same as the side that's opposite it. So this angle right here, sitting opposite that angle we have side B. I'm going to label this angle capital B. I'm going to label this angle capital A since I have side A opposite that angle. And then this is going to be angle capital C. And so what the law of cosine says is if you take side A and you square it, that's going to be equal to b squared plus c squared. So it looks a lot like the Pythagorean theorem right now, but the Pythagorean theorem obviously only works with right triangles. This need not be a right triangle. So there's one other component. This is the tricky component, the weird piece of it. We're going to actually subtract off 2 times b times c. And these lowercase letters, those are all the, the measures of the sides. And then the angle comes into play inside of a cosine ratio, and it's going to be angle the angle that's opposite the side that was on the other side of the equal sign. So here's the law of cosines. What we can do is modify it with the variables that we see over here. So I know this angle, so this is the angle that I want to incorporate here at the end. So I want a cosine of, of pi by 3. Three, and I don't have to label this with a capital Z because this angle does not change. That angle that the roads meet at is not going to change as these people walk away from each other. So this is going to be a cosine of pi by 3. 
Now, if you think about what I have going on here, if I'm saying that this is going to be the angle that I'm going to toss into my law of cosines, I need to make sure that over here on the other side of my law of cosines equation, I use the side that's opposite that angle. So this is going to be a z squared, and then we're going to have x squared plus y squared minus 2xy. Uh, and now we have an equation that relates all of our variables. So what we want to do is we want to take the derivative of this equation with respect to t, and then we should be able to utilize the rate of change of x, the rate of change of y, and then we should be able to solve for dz dt. So if we go ahead and proceed here, since z is a function of t, we're going to have to use a little chain rule, and we're going to get the derivative of the outer function being 2z, but then times the derivative of z with respect to t. The derivative of the x squared is going to be similar. It's just going to involve x's rather than z's. Same thing for the y squared. And then the derivative of this last piece is going to be the, the trickiest piece to handle. Um, I'm going to copy down this constant, minus 2 cosine of pi by 3, right? The 2 and the cosine are constants. Uh, so basically, I'm, I'm copying the constant, the minus 2, the cosine of pi by 3. And now what I need in this set of grouping symbols is I need the derivative of x times y. Well, the derivative of x times y is going to require a little product rule since x and y are both functions of t, and those are obviously being multiplied together. So I'm going to end up with uh, the derivative of x being dx dt times y, and then plus x times the derivative of y with respect to t. These grouping symbols are pretty important. This coefficient that is negative does have to get distributed into both pieces there. So definitely watch your grouping symbols if you're doing a derivative uh, of a law of cosines equation within a related rates problem like we're doing currently. Get ourselves a little bit more space here. We should be able to toss in all of our values and solve for dz dt. So what we need is we need a couple more values. So let me actually, I just do need to see the, the wording again here. So over here, bottom corner, we'll do a little bit of scratch work. We need to know what x is at 4 p.m. And that's pretty simple to figure out because the person that's walking along that road left at 1 p.m. and they're walking at 3 miles per hour. So at 4 p.m. they've been gone for 3 hours, so we're just going to take the rate of change times how long they've been gone, and that's going to give us 9 total miles for x. Similarly, y at 4 p.m. is going to end up being the rate of change of y times the total time, time that's elapsed since that person left. So that's 2 hours to get from 2 to 4. So we're looking at uh, 4 times 2, or 8 miles. Now you do have to figure out what z is. To figure out z, you are going to have to utilize the this law of cosines equation. So, you know, that's going to take a little bit of time. I'm going to go ahead and kind of put that together. You guys can put this number in place of x, this number in place of y, and then evaluate for z. I'm going to write that equation out, and I'll be back with you momentarily. Okay, so I've got the concluding steps here. We'll just kind of talk through them real fast. So before I pause the video there, uh, I was talking about finding z. So to find z, I just went back to my law of cosines equation. I put my 9 in for x, my 8 in for y, uh, and then I just evaluated this, and, or I, I solved it for z. So that's where the square root comes in. And that tells you that at 4 p.m., the distance between the two people is 8.544 miles. Uh, at that point, what I decided to do was go back to the derivative equation right here. And I noticed that I could divide both sides of this by 2, and, and basically that, 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 and that all go away. Uh, so that's why you don't see any coefficients of 2 on this line. So then I realized, well, to find dz dt, I'm just going to have to divide this great big mess minus the 2s uh, by z. And so that's what I did. I put in all my specific values. I evaluated, and I ended up with 3.394 as the rate of change of z at 4 p.m. Uh, if you want to think about the units here, you definitely can. So this is measured in miles. This is measured in miles per hour. So this individual term, miles squared per hour, same thing here, right? A, a y times dy dt is going to be miles squared per hour. This is dimensionless. That's just a ratio. If you think about inside this set of grouping symbols, again, we have miles per hour 
times miles miles times miles per hour. So this term, this term, this term, and this term are all measured in miles squared per hour. This is the value of z at 4 p.m. measured in miles. So when I divide miles squared per hour by miles, I get units like I should of miles per hour. And that is your result.